Thank you very much for joining us on the Modern Job Search Checklist. Once again, it is Friday, 1 o'clock p.m. on the East Coast, 12 Central here in Chicago. Welcome very much, and thank you very much for joining us. If you're listening to us in the chat or viewing us from the chat, feel free to say hi to us to let us know where you're from. We'd mm -hmm. love to hear from you. And I want to also keep you guys in the know that we're also streaming to other platforms like LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I uh, want to first uh, say hi to my co-host, Damian Burkle. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. Ready to go. Thank Good. you. <laughs> Good deal. Uh, his organization's pit or professionals in transition has helped more than 10,000 job seekers find jobs since 1992 and our special guest if you haven't watched our other show she was a guest on the other show on wednesday nicolette barrett of irockresume.com how are you i'm good thank you thanks for having me and it's barrett <laughs> uh you know i'm gonna get that right one day i see, I see one thing and i say another you know <laughs> That's okay. I, I, I really do have adequate <laughs> reading skills. I really do. Uh, <laughs> no worries, honey. I got gotcha. you. I was fourth grade level when I was. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, you know me. My name is Mark. And should you have any questions or you want to get a hold of us, we do have a YouTube channel. The Modern Job Search Checklist is on YouTube. You can check that channel uh, that channel out. We have more than 30 videos on that channel, so uh, yeah. feel free to uh, check it out and enjoy them as you feel need to. We figured that since the holidays are just around the corner, I mean, think about it. In less than two weeks, it will be November. Wow. That's right. I can't believe that, it. On your minds, November. <sighs> Again, mm -hmm. feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Let us know that you're there. Um, we'll always interrupt we, what we're talking about here to tend to your needs there for your job search, especially around the holidays. We'll deliver gifts, I promise. <laughs> so this is this is a very interesting Christmas time, and usually we're mm -hmm. used to the past 10 years jobs being scarce around this particular time. Seemingly, where there are plenty of department stores that are going through the great registration, oh. Uh, registration, and I know I said that wrong. I can't seem to. I, I can't get uh, Barrett out of my mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there are plenty of openings in the restaurant and retail yeah. industries, and mm -hmm. uh, in some ways it's good, in some ways it's sad. And if you mm -hmm. dig deeper, uh, you can become a little bit sad in what's been going on there. So we want to acknowledge that and know that some of you may need to use that as an option to um, use that either as a bridge job or use it as the job. Uh, there's yeah. some companies that have decided to make some of those holiday jobs permanent jobs instead of temporary jobs. Yeah. They didn't say whether they'll stop cutting hours after, you know, January 15th, but right now we'll take one step at a time. So for the panel, and we'll start mm -hmm. with the lady of the panel today, what is your best <laughs> advice for the unemployed to find jobs this season? Is it somewhat the same strategy? Should we look at it differently? Uh, your thoughts on that? Well, thank you so much for um, having me again. I'm so happy to be here. And I just still can't believe that in two weeks, it is going to be November. So it's kind of a little bit of both. I think you should definitely still have the same strategy, but don't overburden yourself where you're not enjoying the holidays. So one of the things I did a couple of years ago, I wrote an article on LinkedIn. It's probably still out there somewhere around 2018 or 2018, something, something like that, where I spoke to job seekers to let them know, do not not snooze during the holidays. Mm -hmm. You know, there everybody is not checked out during the holidays. There are still some workers looking for talent. And the thing is, uh, most budgets are going to um, be regenerated 
January 1st. So you need to get yourself in line and in the pipeline. So when they turn it on, you're ready to go. People still get hired in November. I even had a friend that got hired like December 21st or something. So you mm -hmm. still can get a job during that time. So make sure that you're still focused on it, that you don't drop it, but balance it with making sure that you're able to enjoy your holidays as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. And there's a lot of resources out there. Uh, I know there are several lists that are pretty exhaustive, but at the same time, I looked through a couple of them and they have some, uh, you know, stuff that's kind of out of date. And I think some people need to go yeah. back and update their list to be more helpful, but, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it is a tricky slip, slippery slope because you mm -hmm. just don't know uh, what's true and what's not true. Damien, your, your mm -hmm. perspective. <clears throat> Um, the great resignation is everywhere. Yeah. And if you are job searching, uh, you can pretty much determine either the part-time job or even full-time stop the loss job, because mm -hmm. that's essentially what you're doing. And when you frame it that way, I am keeping food on the table, I'm um, keeping our mortgage current, et cetera, then that changes the whole way that you look at your job. At the same time, you can become more strategic if you know you're going to be working full time or a lot of hours by doing things like making sure your LinkedIn profile is fully complete and robust and mm -hmm. search engine optimized. And that um, on uh, some of the larger uh, job search uh, engines or job aggregators, um, mm -hmm. indeed.com comes to, to mind where you can actually set up a profile and have that profile send you jobs. But my point being is there are things that you can do to automate your job search yes. that should significantly reduce the amount of time that you have to spend in front of a computer banging away and that then creates a pocket of opportunity for you to not go to the greatest job in the world, but again, something that will uh, provide money coming in. And because the great resignation is impacting everybody, um, you have a, a greater chance of going to work for a company that's closer to your area of expertise and possibly at a higher rate of pay than just uh, minimum wage, but you have to be able to negotiate that on the way in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's kind of tough to uh, make a decision at this particular point because uh, a lot of people are trying to re to avoid the retail spin as you will. Um, because sometimes people equate retail jobs and those kind of restaurant jobs as being underemployed mm -hmm. and therefore being underpaid. And I think now one of the good things is, is that some retail establishments have increased the pay and even made benefits available, which is a good thing. I mean, who would have thought that we see uh, signing bonuses on a McDonald's sign for workers? Exactly. <laughs> We, we, you never we thunk never, it. We never imagined it, but mm -hmm. it is here now. Um, there's a target uh, where the pay is actually $18 an hour, which mm -hmm. for some cities is way above the federal uh, um, minimum, which is $7.25 still after so many years. So there are a lot of good things, but I think there's a lot of the bad things too. And I think one of the things that we'll probably even see and hear about is has, you know, bad leadership. If it was bad before is not going to be a whole lot better now because I look at the t comments on Twitter and a lot of, a lot of them are feeling like, you know, that they are, um, that they're going to come out on a big end. And I don't think that's necessarily going to be true, mm -hmm. especially when there's also a lot of sli supply and demand issues with a lot mm -hmm. of the retail establishments and that they're coming up short with a lot of these toys. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Thank goodness I have grown people, uh, grown sons 
They're not yeah. playing with toys these days, so that's a good thing. Uh, they got their own toys they can play with and get and be on back order for all they want. But if you have small kids, that might present a little bit of a challenge and it might present a little bit of a concern because uh, if the stores are not filled with the best toys, that means business is going to be hurting around this particular time. So I think it could possibly get issued. And I think one of the advices, uh, one of the pieces, I have several pieces of advice for people who are looking for jobs. Uh, I don't know if LinkedIn would be one of them, Damien, at this particular time. I would say use LinkedIn as Intel Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. find out the job openings. But I say dig deeper and to finding people on LinkedIn who are actually connected. And I'm going to say that for one, if, even if it's just for the one simple reason, that means if somebody's got a completed work uh, LinkedIn profile and they're on LinkedIn, they care more about the career and probably can tell you, give you a little bit more intel than somebody who doesn't complete that. And that's a shame because, mm-hmm. you know, that's a perception. But I find it to be very true that people who are filling out the, the LinkedIn profile 100%, they're investing that part of themselves, a major part of themselves into their career, as opposed to somebody partially, they're built on hope and, you know, job search and hope mm-hmm. only to work for, it works very minimally. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's yeah. one of the pieces of advice. What do you think of that, uh, Nicolette? Well, you know, I'm a big LinkedIn uh, fanatic. I am a LinkedIn brander par excellent. I make sure that my clients invest not just in the resume, cover letter, thank you letter. They have to have a more robust strategy and that has to include LinkedIn. And not just making sure that the profile is branded and enhanced to make sure that it speaks to their value, but also leverage it by getting on there. Some people just give them do a profile and then they ghost it. I'm like, no, you can't ghost it. That is the prime area for you to make those connections. So I coach my um, clients to make sure that they not only make sure it's updated after I I rewritten it, rebranded it, scrapped it to target what they really want. I make sure that they have a strategy to stay on the um, platform so they can make those connections. And the wonderful thing about it, once they see, oh my gosh, now this person is connecting with me because I've done this and this person is connecting with me. I say, yeah, I told you it's, it's very powerful. And because now you're part of their network, you can develop those conversations for those backdoor opportunities. And that's going to be very important. But if you don't mind, I like to go back to the retail space. Can I go back and talk about that real quick? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And I I look at those jobs as gap jobs, you know, so therefore, if you are out of work and you need something to pay the uh, mortgage, like uh, Damien was talking about, pay your bills, that's a gap job. But don't snooze on that retail cashier job. Mm -hmm. There are still corporations behind there. So if you have a skill set in marketing, Mm -hmm. what better way to market the products by being on the front line and learning and taking that information back and then apply for a corporate job? What Mm -hmm. about if Okay, maybe you're uh, running a cashier, managing that department. Who's to say you can not use your leadership and management skills to manage the department? So Mm -hmm. don't look at it from that entry level. Look at it for, okay. let's do this for now. Gap so I can pay my bills. What strategy do I now need to put in place so I can go further and still enhance those skills? You don't just get there. So I'm just a cashier. No, I make sure that I am the point of um, point of sale for the person. I make sure I give them all the customer service and gear them to the proper um, attire or whatever to make sure that they feel their best. So you can reword it. So you see, I'm a master of words. So it's about how do you interpret that? on the resume and mm-hmm. in LinkedIn to still show that you're still utilizing your skill set. So don't snooze on those opportunities because these major retailers still have corporate departments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Dam- Damien. Uh, also having started my career ringing a register. <laughs> Me too. Like McDonald's 335 yeah. on 35th street in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. I won the best cash of the year award, the little is trophy. That, yep, I right? ran that drive through, baby. You couldn't tell me nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
Yep. Yeah, I, I did a couple of stints at K- Kmart and uh, I think Zare's. And, yeah, I did uh, Zare and, too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Blue Light venture, venture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Sorry, Damien, you go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, the only thing that I was going to say is, is uh, you're right on the money. I uh, took my job at uh, May Company Cleveland, which is now a division of Macy's, Macy's yep. as a uh, full time employee opening up the store. And here's my point my point is, it is when you are working in a department store or any other store and you're taking good care of your customers, you don't know who those customers are. Say that, baby. They know. Hmm. So that's important, number one. Number two, when I was op- opening up the store, um, I was working with a, a bunch of guys that really knew a lot about the product. And so I was new, knew nothing about housewares and kept asking all of these questions and then it came to opening day and they weren't there and and i asked where are they it turned out that they were all the buyers for the Mm. customers area and uh seven years later i was uh sitting as the um, senior buyer in housewares and all of those people that i met at as we were sweating and busting open boxes, all of them were responsible for pushing me through the system. And when I walked through the door, I was looking for a job. I wasn't looking for a career. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what it ended up being. So again, coming back, if you are working with people, treat them well. And many times they'll ask you, I I know I do, because once Mm -hmm. you do retail or work in a restaurant, like I've done also, you don't ever mistreat the person Mm -hmm. who's taking care of you. But often I ask, you know, what is it that you're striving for? And they'll tell me, and if I can help them, I will. So keep all those things uh, in mind and, and circle back and, and think about what uh, Nicolette said. You are not just a cashier. You're much, much more. And it's an opportunity for you to leverage your position every single day, every single time a customer walks in and you say, can I help you? Yeah. Yeah. All of that is good advice. And and I, I too, had started uh, doing retail, ended up in a uh, management position in a retail. And you, Nicolette, you probably can relate to a lot of that too. Yeah. And you, you get your you get your first taste on what it's like to lead in mm-hmm. in the real environment. And those things you really can replace because you really get to see the really good and you get to see the extraordinarily bad. Mm-hmm. So. You know, I, I think those experiences can't be discounted. But I think one of the things, too, is I, I think the job seeker also should have an exit plan, mm-hmm. um, even before you start. And I think mm-hmm. that because you don't want to be caught up in the cycle and you should have some goals or something that you should shoot for if you look if your career as a voice has been beyond that. And don't feel the shame because a lot of people are going to be in that situation because mm-hmm. there are going to be people who will lose their jobs mm-hmm. and will need some kind of parachute in those uh Retail jobs and restaurant jobs may be those landing places for the time being. But I would say, too, as I always say, you've got to stay engaged in your job search, uh, whether you land something or you don't land anything, because the market is going to keep turning until it empties out every uh, possible anomaly that's Mm -hmm. existed in the job market since the beginning of time. So definitely take that to heart. We'll move it on a little bit. And we always want to keep Christmas and holidays in mind when we're giving advice in this particular in this particular show. Um, 
And I know that we all want to find jobs that are going to be valued, and this is going to probably be, come out in a few layers here. But values is going to be is really important to a lot of people right now. It's not something that they're yeah. aspiring to do now. They're really looking a whole lot closer at how they can match your employer. So uh, what has been your advice, especially if you've considered or that you're considering this time of year being uh, a little bit different than in the past, um, like in finding a values match or uh, Mm -hmm. being able to uh, tell if the values that companies say are real, uh, Nicolette? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's so interesting that you say that because what I see with a lot of job seekers is that they don't do the deep work first. No, they are so no. in a such in a panic of just finding a job. They don't take the time. I do like the fact that because of the pandemic, people have had the opportunity to think about it. But what I really recommend they do is coach with someone to develop what their value system is holistically. When I do that with a client, the next phase is, okay, now you have to write up a dream job for yourself. And what you do is job a job description. So write up the job description that fits you and who you are. Once you have an ideal on what that is, then you look for opportunities that align as closely as you possibly can. And it's going to be on a scale, 70% to maybe 80%. You may not get a hundred percent, but can you, mm-hmm. are you okay at 80% of what you're looking for? And that other 20%, how do you then create those opportunities internally to get to that? So I work with my clients to get out of their heads. Okay, come on, tell me what you really want. I, one, one young man said, I just want a job. I said, no, we don't do, do just jobs here. I said, so we're going to roll that back. Let's mm-hmm. talk about you. What do you want? How do you see yourself? So doing that coaching work first and unraveling and not just jumping over all of that to get a resume is not going to serve any career or job seeker, career professional, I should say, job seeker, any any, um, um, due diligence. They have to do that deep work first, then develop that resume, then develop all of those things. But that's how I take my clients through that. And I consider myself more of a strategist and not just a resume writer. The name is cool. I get people to talk to me because they love the IROC resume's name. But when they get to me, I'm like, "Mm -mm, you know, we about to unravel all of this because I want you to be successful because their success is my success. So it's about how do you understand who you are? What are your values? And then when we develop all of that, then we target, I mean, strictly target those companies that align. Now, I can't, you know, speak for the companies who are fibbing. That's when, where you go and start leveraging LinkedIn again to connect with someone who's actually inside the company and then mm-hmm. discuss that culture. Schedule 15 minute coffee chats, tea chats, morning chats, whatever you want to call it, lunch chats. 15 minutes. People are more willing to give you 15 minutes than an hour of their time. And just ask those questions, two or three questions. That's all you need to know to make your determination. That's what I would recommend. Yeah. Yep. Damien. Um, I absolutely uh, agree with everything Mm -hmm. that uh, Nicolette said. Um, Probably the number one thing that I hear when uh, I'm working with my folks is this time I want to get it right. Mm -hmm. This time I want to work at a job that I Mm -hmm. love. And we go through a a series of exercises. And the most important one is to determine what your God-given transferable skills are. Because Mm -hmm. once you know what those are, Those are the talents that will guide you as you go forward. And one of your critical goals should be matching up with a company where your transferable skills match their need, but in a corporate atmosphere that you were comfortable with. Now, saying that you can do everything right. You can get into a wonderful company with a great culture, but all of a sudden your boss changes and, you know, the world goes to hell, excuse me. Um, But 
um, that that is known to happen. But what I tell folks is once you know your transferable skills, you really won't work another day in your life because you're doing what you love. And because you have those transferable skills, you can take them at any time and go elsewhere because North Carolina is one of these no worker rights, right to work. Uh, a boss can come in, look at your shirt, not like it, and you're out the door without any uh, processes or pro uh, process improvement plans or anything else. It's fire at will and hire at will. My point being is that that doesn't happen that much, but it happens. Mm -hmm. But if you know what your transferable skills are, no matter what happens to you in your career, you're going to be able to bounce back and recover quicker. Mm -hmm. And if you have a curated, curated mm -hmm. LinkedIn community that you mm -hmm. have built, they will help you in ways that you cannot plan yes. or predict. Mm -hmm. But if you have established strong relationships within your curated community, opportunity in most cases will come to you. Mm -hmm. Because in my case, every single job that I've ever gone to, the opportunity has come to me as opposed to me going to the opportunity. And I'm, I'm very grateful and I'm, I'm very lucky. And I hope that those that are out there seeing us understand how important it is to marry your LinkedIn profile to your transferable skills plus quantifiable, measurable benefits so that anyone who goes to your profile can see that you are you, you provide deliverables, but also can see what your core areas of strength are and go from there. Yeah. Uh, you know, and Damien, just so you know, hell has no fury like <laughs> the job that really sucks and that you feel like you're really trapped, right? So right. Uh, it, it is very uh, important for job seekers to understand it, it can become cyclical. And yeah. that when you don't do the work before, you get stuck, you yeah, get yeah. tired, then you say, oh, now I want to get a job <laughs> with values when you've been there two or three years oh. and you've got all this work you can't quite catch up to. That's the worst part. Then now you want that job. All you want is another job again. And the cycle continues to do instead of doing the deep work now, wherever you're at. If you do it deep once, you'll be able to appreciate it. Is, yes. is, is, you'll be able to appreciate it. Spot on. And it then becomes part of your life. That's yes. why I always say job search is a lifestyle. It is something mm -hmm. that takes you to be plugged into all the time. Because mm -hmm. if you're not, when things like what we're going through now is happening and what's been going on the past couple of years. If you haven't done that deep dive between then and now, uh, and it's been, uh, what, 19 months since we've been in this mess, um, you know, it's going to be much harder. And I think people just don't realize how important that, that deep dive is and taking that time. Uh, want to see, uh, let's see, Precious. And uh, you know what? I was thinking about time. Precious too. <laughs> Damien, when you said curated uh, community, I said Precious. Precious dropped in my head. And then she, she's watching and she put that in there because Precious can, Precious can testify to that. Because when we did training for the CPCU um, Society here um, in Dallas, I did a whole thing about LinkedIn. Precious mm -hmm. implemented everything I said. Jobs come to her so much now that she don't she don't even want them. She can pick and choose what she wants to do. So mm -hmm. she can tell you that you need to get her on your show next. Precious can testify on how powerful she has taken that LinkedIn and made it a machine. And what I love about Precious, she not only do it for herself, she has done it for others. So she has curated oh. her community, 
leverage her community and put people in context. So now she's a connector. And that's from when a couple of years ago, she really wasn't even using LinkedIn that much. She saw the power, she enacted it, and she leverages not only for herself, but her community. So it keeps going around. I'm so glad you're here, Precious. Shout out to Precious. <laughs> you got to get her on. I'm serious. Get her on. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that, yeah we'll have to we have to look into that. And she has uh, more letters behind her. Yeah. Than, yes. uh, she's our, she was our former she, illustrious yeah, president, she and she is awesome. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's I an mean, insurance I would, guru. Probably spend the whole, probably spend the whole show talking about her. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, That's my girl. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. Shout out to Precious. Thank you very much. And uh, you know, she is a now a value member of this community as well. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things that yeah, as soon as when people find out what LinkedIn can actually do, but yes. getting them to that point is just really a, uh, how should I say it? It is, it's a mountain to move yeah. really, mm -hmm. because I think people either, they don't look at social like they should. Yeah. People think social, they take it very lightly and say, I don't want to do all that. Well, if you did it once, Trust me, you mm -hmm. won't mind doing it over and over again. And you really won't have to because you've done the dirty work at first. Yes. And a lot of it is dirty work because you have to kind of look back and look at, like Damien said, what about your accomplishments if you're going to pursue that field? Like I only have like the last few years. I don't have my management experience all day. I don't have my retail experience. I don't have the other experiences. And really, I don't care to rehash it because I created the the job I want in the career I wanted. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think that, that more people need to get ready to do that uh, mm -hmm. here in the future, because I think really the future of work is going to be about not what you can get, but what you can create and the life that you can create, because you're going to actually need to take a little bit more control over that. Damien? Oh, I absolutely agree. Um, you're, you are responsible for your career. Yeah. Uh, and it's important that, that folks out there understand that so mm -hmm. that they are constantly improving, constantly mm -hmm. taking courses, constantly taking chances, being mm -hmm. active in the community, helping others in person and online, mm -hmm. uh, being a thought leader on LinkedIn, all of these things are mm -hmm. important components. And it, going back to what um, uh, Mark said, and mm -hmm. job searching is a, a lifestyle. A I mean, lifestyle. It, yes. it it never stops. Mm -hmm. And I agree from the standpoint that as we go forward. Uh, multiple uh, multiple channels rather of income is going to become the norm and uh, working full time certainly possible but it's all of the other things that you have going on in the background that are going to help you be prepared at all times so that when you do get that hit and everybody loses their job at mm -hmm. least once in their career Yep. When that does happen, you have all these other things going on in the background that are mm -hmm. generating revenue mm -hmm. that allow you to keep going, find the position that you feel is most appropriate for you, mm -hmm. and, and the momentum for you continues to grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I think, Damien, when you started out uh, Professionals in Transition, uh, having one job was just the only imaginable option that was available uh, at yes. that particular time. And, mm -hmm. you know, to work two jobs was extraordinary. It's like, uh, what kind of career do you have if you work two jobs? Now, it's, it is practically is the norm to have even two full-time jo jobs and to be able to work remote from both of them. Mm -hmm. And in some kind of way, and, and we're here now where multiple jobs, all, many more people have it uh, substantially uh, if you count the numbers as opposed to uh, just having one job. Nicolette, did you have anything else to add? 
Yeah, you know, that is so uh, spot on. And I love that as well, Mark, that you said the um, actual lifestyle, because when you're a career professional, you it is your lifestyle. If you just mm -hmm. want a job, then you're always going to be seeking. Right. Mm -hmm. So what do you do when you are a career professional? What you do is take your skills and you always have them in your skills toolbox. So like um, Damien said, you can go anywhere you want. I tell my clients all the time, don't think of your skill set as a uh, companies or don't become your title. It has nothing to do with that. What you are is your skill set, your competencies, your experiences, your value add. That's who you are as an entity. And that's why I always talk about the CEO of your own career. You become you incorporated. And when you take that with you, you can do anything that you want. And on the other end, what I always talk to about people to do too, don't get stuck in one place. If you really want to increase your wealth, you have to get comfortable mm -hmm. with moving. So yeah. therefore, I always tell people, OK, if you don't want to start, if you're not an entrepreneur, you could be an entrepreneur. You leverage your skill set and keep shopping yourself around every couple of years to increase your wealth, leveraging careers to do that. Instead of sitting there getting one percent raise, three percent raise after enough of that, and you got your experience, get another job with a 10 percent increase. That's how you increase your wealth, leveraging the career as an entrepreneur and the CEO of your career. So I talk about that as well. And yes, having another stream of income like I did, because I had no idea that my um, skill set and as a resume writer, writer, interview prep coach, salary negotiator, all that kind of stuff was something I can package and actually sell because you do it for corporate America, because as a leader, you're expected to do that. So mm -hmm. those are the skill sets that I do by way of corporate America. But now I'm like, what? my goodness, I can actually package this, this up and sell it to others so that they can invest in themselves so they can make the same moves. So they there's there's almost a need to have another stream of income as this pandemic has showed us. So we have to do that work. And when I'm talking to my clients, I always I say as an entrepreneur at heart, I'm also thinking about ways on how you can start your own whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. You know, Damien, every time that Nicolette speaks, I want to say amen. For <laughs> you know I'm a pastor's <laughs> wife, so you know that. I am yes, a senior I, pastor's I, wife, I, so I do, I do, <laughs> the first I lady of the that. church. <laughs> That, that's, that's right. Every every time. And this is just job search. Could you imagine if she had the Bible out? <laughs> you just don't know what would actually happen. Right. I'm but passionate I, I, about this thing. <laughs> but I, I, I really do think the mindset has everything yeah. to do with what we're talking about here because I think people are used to working from, I hate to say this phrase, yeah. but I think it's mm -hmm. true. People work from scarcity. They work mm -hmm. from the bare minimum yeah. and they're happy with the bare minimum, not knowing there's so much more that are out there and yeah. that you don't have to stick with just your nine to five job if you don't mm -hmm. want to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think people, what they want to do is become comfortable because they've been orientated like that because of the way that they grew up. They grew mm -hmm. up with either somebody hustling in the family or they yeah. grew up, you know, with people coming home and that's when, you know, life begins or homework begins and all that. And they want to feel that way and they're going to have stability. And I think a lot of that is gone mm -hmm. uh, as we know it because a lot of people are shifting their interests. In fact, the lines are kind of blurred now, aren't they, mm -hmm. between life and work? Absolutely. And the pandemic kind of ushered that in, uh, that you, you're now your life is your work and your work is your life in some kind of way. But mm -hmm. you do have to kind of stop work so that you begin. I know I was telling Damien before we started, I'm exhausted. <laughs> 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 I'm exhausted. And, mm -hmm. and I, I got I got a ton of things going on. It's like it doesn't stop. But, but I can afford to sit back, rest. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just for the rest of the weekend, if I need to take that time and then start again Monday or start again Tuesday uh, to do that, uh, being employed by the man and especially being employed by co corporate, you can't do that. You don't have that luxury mm -hmm. because unless you schedule it mm -hmm. and right. get paid for the time right. that you take <laughs> off. Mm -hmm. So I think, go ahead, David, you were about to say something. Oh, I, I was just going to say, I didn't mean to go ahead and finish your thought and then I'll jump in. No, but I was just going to say that people, I, I mean, our lives are really different now. 
and mm-hmm. we need to stop trying to hold yeah. on to what we traditionally understood as mm-hmm. kind of the board. And I really do think as well, as far as our younger people and, and if there's some that are listening, especially those at college, I think you should ignore your parents' advice, especially when they talk about what they used to do and <laughs> what it used to do. Because <laughs> yeah. that doesn't that doesn't, that doesn't apply anymore. anymore. No. The way you feel about work is the way it really is now. Don't try to feel about it the way that your parents, because it doesn't work anymore. Don't listen to old people like me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, listen to me because I, I, I this is what I do. But, but don't right. tell older people like me. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, some of who don't have their pulse, the, their thing on the pulse of what's going on. Yeah. That's what it is. Yes, mm-hmm. and some of it you've got to do. Damien, go ahead and add on to that. Or take well, away the, from that. the the only thing that I wanted to backpedal just a little bit. This certainly would be uh, a, a, another show, but. You know, now I have this image burned in my head of uh, Nicola up, all dressed in black with the collar. <laughs> <laughs> the career, yeah. the career of um, um, evangelist. <laughs> yeah, the career evangelist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. By but, the end, you're going to either repent or have a different career. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What my show idea is uh, at at some point for the three of us, and and again, I don't know how you all feel about this, but I will tell you that uh, eight out of 10 people that go through professionals in transition Mm -hmm. talk about how their faith was Mm -hmm. tested as they were going through unemployment. Mm -hmm. And and that's an issue that you never hear people talk about. And, uh, you know, I won't go through all the details, but the bottom line is there would be no professionals in transition if I hadn't been down on my knees and said, Thank you know, Lord, I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. If, if I don't have to go back to Cleveland, I, I don't know what it is, but I'll do something about Mm-hmm. unemployment and and that's the reason why there's professionals in transition so mm-hmm. you know we can we can talk about it after the show but um, mm-hmm. it is really something that many people uh, encounter as they go through uh, the the road to reemployment mm-hmm. yeah I really do think faith has a lot to do with um, you know, your success, yes. but even has more to do with, uh, with you enduring. Um, in my experience, more people seem to abandon their faith during the time mm. than they do, you know, well, I think the two extremes, there's some who really do kind of say, God, if you give me a job, I will, uh, move this mountain. Or walk on water, but they're those that really they feel like they can't move forward. And I think it's one of three things. Usually, it's usually your job, it's usually your relationship, and usually money are the three obstructions to really uh, that people tend not to push through completely on. And yeah, mm-hmm. we'll have to do a, a, a show on that. That could be yeah, for sure. quite a show. Yes, uh, indeed. So, so mm-hmm. uh, I know some of you like to hear more, from more of you. Uh, Precious is starting to take up the whole uh, the whole <laughs> chat. So uh, not that we don't mind, but uh, yeah, Precious, we, we'll probably have you on because Nicolette said to. Yes, uh, but, <laughs> but uh, I, I'd like to I like to dig back to uh, something mm-hmm. that Nicolette said, and actually she knew that because that was on the itinerary. Mm-hmm. Is that is it really such a dream job now? Because I think I think really mm-hmm. we're all have to in some ways re, not reimagine what our career path. I think the idea of a career trajectory has kind of or, or is fading in that sense because a lot of those jobs that we kind of started with, especially if you graduated, let's say about ten years ago from college, or maybe ten years ago from high school. 
a lot of those jobs don't really exist in the way that you imagined them at the beginning. So therefore, people are going to have to reimagine their their lives, and they're also going to have to reimagine their dream job if it really exists or does it exist, Nicolette. You know, I'm thinking about the Disney a dream is what your heart uh, when your heart makes a wish. Right. <laughs> and okay. it can happen. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it does. And that goes right back to my um, um, talking about developing your own job description for what you really want mm -hmm. to do. And then you take that job description and you look for something as close as possible to it where it is your dream job. Now, I want to speak on the opposite side of employers. Now, employers, if you are out there and you're listening to me, you're going to have to change faster than what you're changing now. Mm -hmm. And that way, when if you really want talent coming in the door, you can't have out the same old stale job descriptions with 30 million things in that job description and make it one salary and one job. That's mm -hmm. going to burn people out. So what you have to do is look at, okay, what are employer, employees really looking for? They're looking for connectivity. They're looking for engagement. They're looking for uh, value. They're looking for all of those things in addition to um, doing the actual work that brings them joy. So I think from that perspective, the employee needs to change the way they market their opportunities. And then employees are more apt to go ahead and match up with those values to get there dream mm -hmm. job. So mm -hmm. it is not a figment of our imagination. It actually can happen. But I truly believe that the employer and the employee, there's going to have to be a meeting of the minds. And the employer, it's not your market anymore. It's the employee's market. And that's when I work with the employee, the potential employee to leverage their negotiating skills to get as close as possible. Apply for the job that's 70 to 80 percent. And let's see how we can negotiate to get that other 20 percent. So everybody is happy. And then guess what? That employee will be more engaged and give you not only 100 percent, 110 percent. But until those HR departments start writing the job descriptions like they should and not these old stale ones that they keep rehashing and also the HR departments rethinking how do they bring the employees into the company, they're going to slow and they need to do a better job of attracting and stop whining about the great resignation and do something about it and mm -hmm. leverage experts to come in and consult so that they can get out there. We have the pulse of other the actual employees coming to us, Damien and I. So we mm -hmm. have that. So use us to consult so we can help your organization to get with the program. I don't care how large of a corporation that you are. You need to strip it down and let's start over. Let's have some real conversation. If you truly want a, a career professional who's going to do right by you and not only earn their salary, but also show you that you can get a return on your investment in an employer. So it's a twofold. You can have a dream employee who gets their dream job. So let's mm -hmm. talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. Amen. What can mm -hmm. I say? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> I wanted to say it the whole show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but <laughs> mm -hmm. Damien, I think I think Nicolette brings on a good point though, because I think employers are been very slow to change. And in fact, in fact, some of them are just throwing out benefits, and I think they're just throwing it out uh, out of desperation more yep. than, than actually being thoughtful. And in some cases, it's not all about the money. Uh, it oh, all has say a bit, that. A say lot that. Has to, a lot yep. of it has to do about the temperature in the room, and many times that temperature is has been very chilly in the past, and people are not falling for the bait of of you know uh, more benefits and all that because you know what somebody else is offering that too, and I've yes. got a choice to make. So, Damien, your thoughts. Sure. Um, I'll roll back to, uh, is there a dream job? Uh -huh. I'm going to answer it two ways. Uh, I think that if you find a job where it's hitting 80% of your criterion, you're, you're about as close as you're going to get, in most cases, to your dream job, because every job has crap work that mm -hmm. you right. don't like, right. but you got to do. Uh, yeah. But while you're in that company, or if you're not 
in that position that is your dream job, you can pull yourself up and above your current level by being an outstanding employee, good attitude, mm -hmm. understand that it's yeah. results, that that's really there. That's what really makes the company the company. And mm -hmm. demonstrate that you're great in the corporate sandbox. Don't be afraid to reach out to others within your company above your level. It's okay. And also, mm -hmm. as no matter how burdened you are, and, and I can speak from experience, if you have the opportunity to join uh, an intra-company team to tackle some sort of issue, do it. Yes, it's yes. more work, but you're going to get to know. Set. That's mm -hmm. right. The skill mm -hmm. set and mm -hmm. the relationships that you'll build from the inside out. So um, your dream job is out there. Uh, it's just going to take, as they used to say in the old days, before the internet, it, it's just going to take a lot of shoe leather. And basically that means it's going to take a lot of work on your end to pinpoint that ideal job if it's inside the company or if it's not. And, and that's okay. But mm -hmm. if you're not in your dream job, I think my bottom line answer is don't give up, don't give in and go out there and find it because somewhere out there, your dream job lies waiting yeah. for you. Yeah. I, I think that uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the opposite of it. And I'm not going to say, no, there's really not such of a dream job, but I think part of this deserves an explanation. I think people need to look at every, every job that they're going to pursue as a dream job. And, uh, and I'll say it again for Nicolette Jordan's back that every, every job that you're looking for the next job, every job that you should pursue should be your dream job. And the reason why I say this, because our dream job changes yeah. and the things within it way too often to even say that there's that ultimate job that would you stay there even if you found it the next job? Would you stay at that job? Uh, or you could really fall in and out of love uh, with that job, uh, even if it's a dream situation. Because really, it's, it's hard to, to say if a dream job has perfections in it. It's really hard to say, probably not. But as Damien said, there are things about it. But I think people don't pursue their dream job because they don't do the work that we talked about behind. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, that's first, it. That that's deep it. Dive. That deep work. And mm -hmm. it, takes, it, it takes some time to get a job that you really love mm -hmm. is what yep. I prefer as opposed to saying a dream job. Because I think, too, that, that career pros have kind of ruined the idea of what a dream job really is because a lot of times they use it as the marketing mm -hmm. and they're there are some that are out there, mm -hmm. not all, mm -hmm. that are just doing just enough to make the make the client happy instead of oh, doing yes. the work, <laughs> doing the work that it takes yeah. to get them to and help encouraging them to get to that level. Because as a career pro, you kind of know what uh it's sort of like when I was a personal trainer, the difference between a novice and a personal trainer is that the, the novice kind of knows the exercises to do, but a personal yeah. trainer does the, does knows what the exercise what will be effective because they know what the muscles do. And yes. I think there's a, there's the same principle that applies here is that, you know, what it takes to mold and to get to that point to where that person will have their job and know the areas they need to go in. And there's exercises 
that people have to go to to get there. And that's why I kind of question that because I hear a lot of career professionals say that I'll help you get your dream job. Oh, yeah. And it's going to cost you this arm and this leg. And when the person gets the job and you look behind uh, the story sometimes and and you, they connect it to the person because now they wrote this nice little LinkedIn recommendation for you that you go going, that was your dream job? Really? <laughs> and so, and, and I know I'm going to get some pushback on it, but I can, I can look at it that way now. I write about it. So yeah. there. Mm. Uh, you know, <laughs> You're right on now. <laughs> I'm going to uh-huh. be a truth say here that uh-huh. is that as a profession, we if we're going to say that we can help people find that and we do, don't let me peek behind the curtain to find out that you're not. Uh-huh. And don't let even more so don't let the client find out that you're not. I may have uh-huh. gone off on a little tangent, but I have some feelings about this uh, uh-huh. because I think it's really important if you say you're going to, uh, that you need to do the work and you also need to have them do the work for the, that uh, for the synergy to happen. Anybody disagree with me here? But feel free to. Uh-uh. <laughs> I think you're spot on, and especially for one whose tagline is "Land the job of your dreams and create a career that rocks." I would say very true, and yeah. that's why I, you know, when I tell people my name is, is all marketing, I rock resumes, and when people say I rock, they are in in essence telling themselves that they do rock. And what mm-hmm. I tell people once they get with me, I say, "Okay, I brought you in, and let's have a real conversation." And they become my um, basically my advocates, and they become my uh, referral system because after Mm -hmm. they've experienced me helping them to truly land their dream job and then taking it the next step not only just land it let's try to keep it and figure out what your next step is and that's where the career that rocks come in the coaching Mm -hmm. it's about okay now i've experienced it let me tell someone else because it's truly the investment that they make and they get much more And I have to go back to the um, spiritual side of it because I do pray for my clients. I tell my clients, Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray for you. So they get a lot more than just the actual resume. And they also get my um, experience because you're going back to the novice and the pro. And then it's a big push, you know, resume writers, make sure you keep raising your rates. Well, if you don't have a, um, and I'm I'm trying to be careful not to say that someone's skill set is not there. I'm talking about sometimes you just have to have that experience um, being mm-hmm. in the workforce and the different levels to really leverage that and being able to really hone your skills. Even if you haven't worked in corporate America for that long to really know how corporate America works, there's right. ways that they can even enhance their skill set and their knowledge and not just write a resume because I rewritten, have rewritten a lot of resumes that people have paid some money for, but it's not really telling the career story. So it's a mm-hmm. lot of different ways. And I think that's going to be a whole nother hour conversation, but it's yeah. about, you know, making sure you understand it's beyond. So, so therefore, when the market draws you in, then you have to see how that organization can really assist you and getting to where you need to be. Because it's just not about the price. It's about, okay, the investment and can I get a return on my investment? And I'm so grateful that I don't do any paid marketing, none. Mm-hmm. All my my pipeline is full based on referrals because yeah. they've experienced me. And most of them director, VP, CEOs, they just come straight, go to Nick Willette, go to Nick Willette because you get more than just a career branding session and documents. You get so much more of looking inside. And that's when we do the deep work to figure out what, what it is do you really want? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Damien, you want to have the last word? Uh, yeah, almost an hour. <laughs> yeah, it's sure. all, almost at the top of the hour here. Um, uh, I think pulling it all together, uh, you all, all of you out there have heard some great information, and we've had mm-hmm. a chance to answer some really pressing questions. And the bottom line is it's kind of like in television where they say, back to you, mm-hmm. because it really is back to you. It's your career. It is your job to be in charge. And, and hopefully, um, Nicolette and Mark and, and, and me have given you a little more direction on your career path. And uh, we sure hope that you'll uh, join us again next week. And as always, Thank you, Nicolette, 
And thank you, now thank I can you, say, Mark. Back to you, Mark. <laughs> yeah, we, we do, Always a we pleasure. Do, mm -hmm. Yes, we do appreciate you, Nicolette, coming on and spicing up our uh, and 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 giving us. Uh, I feel like I'm closer to God now. <laughs> Uh, but you know, and, uh, but I, I really do do appreciate your spirit and what you bring to the table. That's why I invite you to this show uh, yes, to bring you. that here as you did the job secret nation. Damien, what do you have coming up that the people should know about? Uh, what's really exciting is uh, we are going to uh, move to in person meetings at professionals in transition. Yeah. And we're going to do that starting November the 11th. So, you know, fingers crossed that there isn't a surge uh, in COVID or COVID plus the flu. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and, and, and try to be able to offer in-person services because, you know, the, the secret sauce is being able to provide uh, support and connections. And then also uh, somewhere in November, December, the uh, article in, in uh, Consumer Reports uh, I signed off on a couple of days ago. So that should be uh, really interesting. How about you, Mark? What do you have uh, coming up? I have a lot coming up, but I, I'll have to wait to announce it at this particular time. Uh, I want to be sure to ask Nicolette, is there anything that people uh, should know about coming from you that you want people to follow? I would love for people to subscribe to iRock.tv where all of my videos live and it's over a hundred okay. videos out there because I've been live streaming for years, all types of topics and great interviews as well. So we're really pushing the iRock.tv YouTube channel. So go out there and just look for iRock.tv or iRock TV, I should say. They don't let me have a dot. But anyway, iRock TV or my name, Nicolette Barrett, and you'll see me pop up as the Get Hired Strategist. Good deal. They used to be, let you have the dot TV. That's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, because I got to figure it out because every time I keep submitting for it, they keep saying no. Everything, I mean, at least it's a URL now, a vanity one, because I've got over right. the 100 now. But right. I, I, I may, it may be used an error. But if you do iRock TV, either way, I'll come up. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, those of you who follow me, you know, Job Secret Nation, uh, hashtag Job Secret Nation is going to be on. This coming Wednesday, of course, we're having a show every week except for Thanksgiving and around the Christmas holidays. Other than that, we're going to be there on a regular basis. And, of course, we're going to be right back here on the Modern Job Search Checklist every Friday. Next Friday, we will be here as well. And if you're a career professional and you are listening, we invite you to come on the show. Uh, I am having a little open call, though we have some we have some guests coming up here. Uh, I do invite you to come and we can try to find a date that we compatible for you, especially if you create content on LinkedIn. Now, you might be a little lost if you're not and if you're not really uh, engaged in the job search like we are. Um, that you might be a little lost in what's going on here. But if you are plugged in, if you're active and you're actively helping job seekers, we want you to be a part of this and give your perspective and expertise. Mm -hmm. So you can follow in DM me or Damien for that information, and we can go forward with that. In the meantime, thank you very much. Peace and the battle of love. We'll see you here next Friday. You guys have a great week. Thank you.